So many years I wondered what I'd do if I ever saw him again. And then I did. In a photo, in a briefing room. And I was being sent to meet him with a gun. I don't think we should close the investigation into Danny Walton's background. I'd like to keep digging. <laughs> What's he saying? This man's a young Ronan Murphy, a suspect shot by Danny Walden during Operation Damson. Well, they knew each other. Did you fabricate the improper relations between you and Detective Sergeant Arnott? No. Did you fabricate the planting of evidence against you? No. What is your verdict? Not guilty. It is with deep regret that I inform you all of the death of PC Rod Kennedy. Harry initiated the struggle with that gun. And it's only his word for it that it was self-defense. I owe you an apology for the other night. Your uh, dinner invitation. You're a married man. This is it. I think Danny Walden purposely created a trail of evidence, and now we're on the trail of the other abusers. Dale Roach. He was leader of the city council during the period Danny Waldron and Joe Nash were residents at Sandsview. The things that he did to us at Sandsview. I promise you, I will get these bastards. Baines killed Danny. I'll lay you even to kill Kennedy as well. Hello? You're being feared out for murdering Rob Kennedy. If you want a way out, you listen to me. Did he ever mention any other names? Politicians, coppers? Single-handedly brings in an AFO. Welcome back, Doc. I'd just like to, to get on with my life. I'm Jill Bigelow, legal counsel to AC12. I imagine they keep you very busy. Have a seat. You know, Superintendent Hastings. I do. As part of a new initiative christened Truth and Reconciliation, Following a miscarriage of justice, parties are invited to engage in dialogue to initiate the healing process. There seems to be an oversight. Some of the officers involved in my wrongful conviction are missing. Superintendent Hastings, as senior investigating officer, represents the whole team. Well, I want them here. Or this new box you need to tick just... Well, won't get ticked. Same without you. Miss Denton, on behalf of this department and this constabulary, I offer you a sincere and unconditional apology for your wrongful conviction in respect of the offence of conspiracy to murder. Dad? Uh, as a senior investigating officer, I acknowledge your feelings regarding your conviction. Wrongful. Conviction, and you haven't actually said sorry. Maybe you'll do better, dear Sana. You require me to sign off that I accept your apology. I won't, unless it comes from the officers who wronged me. You're out. What more do you want? An apology. Jesus Christ. Well, this isn't going very well at all, is it?
a senior investigating officer, I apologize for your conviction. You omitted wrongful, but thank you, that's very gracious. Dear Sarnet, we're all waiting. Your allegation that I planted incriminating evidence against you is false. Point of information. I've made two allegations. One, you engaged in inappropriate sexual relations whilst on an undercover operation. And two, you planted £50,000 to simulate a bribe. And it's all crap, Steve. Really? Do tell. Lindsay Denton knows our procedures inside out. She exploited doubts and grey areas to tie our investigation in knots. Oh, you did that all by yourself. First, DC Fleming's failed undercover operation and then yours. I didn't do too badly. You ended up in prison. And we didn't fail. We got you convicted. But you know, sexual misconduct with undercover officers is a hot topic. So you invented this story about us going to bed together so the jury sees you as a wronged woman. I mean, they obviously felt I must have shagged you into conspiring to murder a protected witness. Stephen! Thank you, dear Sana. I couldn't agree more that the question of your sexual integrity quite rightly made the jury sceptical. But I've got a recording that will be of interest to you all. All right, now this just isn't the time or the place. Now is exactly the time and exactly the place. Not in court, in a room full of rubberneckers and reporters, my pathetic private life laid out for everyone to laugh at, to pity. I couldn't bear that. But to show you all what kind of officer got me locked up for 585 miserable days of that, that I can live with. I've had my whole life put on trial. And now it's your turn. You've been charged and tried, but the one person that refuses to examine what you're accused of is you. I'm innocent. The question is, are you? This phone was next to the bed the entire time, although I can believe that you were too preoccupied to notice. Would you like me to uh, play it for everyone? Dear Sana? No. Christ's sake, Steve. Well, I feel this meeting's been remarkably successful and I'll be very happy to record in writing that it's been a, a healing process for all parties. I'd also prefer it if you'd consider close the matter of D.S. Arnott's sexual impropriety. I don't intend to make a statement of evidence. The people that actually did the crime that I was in prison for, they're still out there. Superintendent, you uphold the integrity of the police service. If you held one iota of doubt about my conviction, no officer would be more troubled by that than you. No officer would do more to right that wrong. I plan to move on with my life. You won't move on, Steve, until you stop chasing me and you start chasing your real enemies. For Christ's sake, son, what was in that phone? Oh, we've got to take that crap from her, sir. You lied in court. You lied to your partner and you lied to me. I didn't lie to you, sir. I just don't think it's appropriate to discuss an officer's private life. And I don't quiz you on yours. What do you mean by that? I'm a married man. Hello, sir. Anyway, it isn't private when it's bandied about in court of law. What matters, sir, is whether I planted evidence. Are there any forensic anomalies in respect for the money found at Denton's address? No. It matches the other bribe money. Are the exhibit officer's records inaccurate or incomplete? No. That there... is not the issue. It's completely the issue. I did not plant evidence. If, if I had sex with Lindsay Denton, which I didn't, does that stop her being guilty? Lindsay Denton has left the building. Steve Arnott should do the same. Discreditable conduct. Steve Arnott did not plant evidence. But it's okay to have a relationship with a suspect. Look, I can see how you feel about this, Ted. Why defend the indefensible? 
Look, he can be an irritating wee gobshite when he wants to be. I'll give you that. I'll tell you why. Because you personally recruited him from counter-terrorism, and that means you having to admit your misjudgment. Sorry, Ted. I intend to return to this conversation. Kate. Kate, wait, please. One time you told me Lindsay Dent had dough on you. Remember what I said? Maybe there are some people who always told the truth. The rest of us choose our moments. And that's what I had to do. To ensure the evidence was put in front of the jury that would convict Lindsay Denton of a crime we all know she committed. But we don't know. The only person who really knows is Lindsay herself. We gather the evidence and the people decide, and they've decided that she didn't do it because you couldn't keep it in your pants. That's not what happened. What happened? It was an undercover operation in which I nurtured the trust of the target. That is straight out of the manual and total bollocks. You shagged her because you wanted to. But I didn't shag her. Do you know what, Steve? This is all just a bit too late. You should have told me the truth. You should have given me the chance to work with you on this. That's what partners do. Image 313 is a photograph of item reference NTW7. Said item is a rope found hanging from an overhead support. You see, Detective Inspector Cotton has given us a statement where you attempted to overpower him with the intent of causing death by hanging... The exact same means as PC Rod Kennedy. I didn't murder Rod, and I absolutely didn't attempt to murder D.I. Cotton. In fact, D.I. Cotton set me up. <laughs> he set you up? Yeah. Cotton smashed himself in the face to make it look like I hit him, but I didn't. And as far as the rope goes, he must have planted it there beforehand. He'll say anything to save his own skin. Yeah. And why would an officer of mine do such a thing? Ah! Huh? To frame me for Rod's murder. Do you have anything to support these claims against the I Cotton? I mean, anything at all? For the tip. The interviewee is offering no supporting evidence. Moving on. Yes, on it. For the tape, image 291, item reference MR3, and image 292, item reference MR4. MR3 and 4 are mobile phones. A Section 18 search of your property recovered a pair of unregistered pay-to-go phones concealed in the garage. Document 16, analysis of activity on these phones reveals they made and received calls within the telecommunication cell that covers your home address. Three nights before the murder of Danny Waldron, a call was received by one of these phones. Who called you? No comment. Document 16 again, the night before Danny Waldron's murder. Another call. Who called you that night? Calls of a suspicious nature were made shortly before you volunteered to continue serving on Danny Waldron's squad and before you murdered them. Who made those calls and what did they ask you to do? Well, the team, the interviewee is not answering. It's pattern of communication. Unregistered page ago phones used for a short period, then discarded. Is one we all recognize from organized crime. Who's got you in their pocket? Nobody. Harry, we 
have you receiving phone calls linked to Danny's murder. We have you lobbying to stay on Danny's squad. We have your hands all over the firearm. We have you consistently lying about Danny's activities. We have a witness who says it was you who did all this and not PC Rod Kennedy. We have you at the murder scene and we have you in possession of the instruments of Kennedy's death. Now, that's about the height of it and it's a great big pile of evidence that is gonna crush you flat. Now, come on. You killed Danny Waldron, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now we're getting some. We know you can't have been acting alone. Help us help you. Who gave the order to kill Danny Waldron? Who was it? Come on, who was it? Who was it? You've got the bastard. Come on, talk. He never gave me a name. Who didn't? The bloke I was spoke to. It sounded like it was a Londoner, it was South East or somewhere. It's all done over the phone, wasn't it? You know, I never met anyone like no. You've got to know more. Times, places, other contacts. Look, someone's behind all this, pulling the strings, and I want to know who it is. Ronan Murphy, the suspect killed by Danny Waldron. What do you know about him? Nothing. Well, they had history, Danny and him. Well, that's news to me. Danny shot Murphy and was going after Murphy's associates. They were the ones that wanted Danny dead. The job you did for them. I didn't know Murphy, I don't know his associates, I don't, I don't know why they wanted Danny dead. Look, who's behind this? What was Danny onto that meant you had to kill him? Be nothing further to say. We've offered nothing new in this interview to mitigate you being charged with the following offences. I therefore have the authority from the crime prosecutor. Oh, well, we got the bastard. Yeah, they should throw away the key. Of PC Roderick Kennedy, two. The murder of PS Daniel Waldron, and three. The attempted murder of DI Matthew Cotton. Now, do you understand? I've been doing more work on the Ronan Murphy file. It's a small entry, blink you'd miss it, that he was interviewed by a murder squad in relation to unsolved gangland murders. But there's no details of the offences he was being linked to. Can't help you. How many times are we going to go over this? Lindsay lied in court to con the jury. Now, maybe you're thinking if he'd shag a suspect, who else is he going to shag? I can't help you because I've never heard of any murder squad investigation into Ronan Murphy. If I had, don't you think I'd have bloody told you by now? Still subject to delays due to overrunning engineering work. No. Oh, Making all your money, are you? Hey! You bunch of bleeding trash! Huh? You shit out! You bunch of bastards! Oh, here they are. Come on, eh? Great. They should rip it down. Smash every brick away. Joe, we've spoken to the officer handling your case. No one's going to press charges. Those bastards. They're going to get away with what they've done. 
You know I'm gutted Dale Roach is unfit to face prosecution. But listen, Joe, we're looking into the complaints made by you or Danny or any of the other lads to the police about the abuse you were made to suffer by staff and visitors. And any police that came, you know, they just talked to the staff. I mean, they was the bastards who were organising it in the first place. And anyone that talked about it, you know, they just got it ten times worse. Well, we're doing everything we can, but we still need your help, Joe. We're particularly interested in this man. Now, you identified him as a football coach. Well, his name's Ronan Murphy. Did you or anyone you know ever make a complaint about him? Yeah, that was, that was one time. A social worker. We did nothing. Nothing was done. What social worker? Just some posh twat. Posh to us anyway. We need a name, Joe. Oliver Stevens Lloyd, a registered social worker with responsibility at Sunsview. He was a council employee around the time that Danny Waldron and Joe Nash were residents. Only record found so far is of a disciplinary hearing accusing Stevens Lloyd of dealing cannabis to the residents. Stevens Lloyd denied the charges and insisted he was being victimised because he tried to raise concerns about abuse at Sunsview. All other records have been lost. Variously reported destroyed in a fire or lost in an office move. The tribunal reports existence is probably on oversight by whoever's been destroying records. All we have so far is Stevens Lloyd alleging that a number of individuals, many of whom are in positions of authority, were part of a network of abusers. He referred to compiling a list of names that he passed on to the police, but it appears none of Stevens Lloyd's allegations were investigated. And regarding this list and the officer it was passed to? No record. No record. We'll keep looking. Find this social worker. Sir. Sir. Terrific presentation, guys. Honestly, really terrific. Steve, before Danny died, he tried to say something. I thought he said listen and then couldn't get any more words out. Now I reckon what he said was list. Yes, guy. Vinny, the evidence recovered from Danny Waldron's flat. Uh, yeah. The empty envelope. Ryan Murphy was shot dead in the heat at the moment. But Linus, Danny had time with him. Time to get information. They never tested the envelope. What? Bloody forensics. They're on a tight budget this financial year. I don't care about their budget. Get it tested now. Thanks, Vinny. So, what was all that about then? This is where Stevens Lloyd's body was found. This is the original report, date 21st November 1998. Oliver Stevens Lloyd was last seen a few weeks beforehand. His body was found on the 14th by a fisherman. The statement's in the file. What's going on? I'll ask Murder Squad if they'll reopen the case. Right. Hiya. Right. You all right? We just re-interviewed the fisherman who found the body. He recalls that pretty much the first thing he was told at the scene was that it had to be a suicide. Also appears no photos or videos were taken of the scene. Was there a missing persons report or investigation at the time? There was. The report's cursory, to say the least. Doesn't look as if anyone was actively searching for Stevens Lloyd. The SIO at the time was a DI, Marcus Thurwell. He's no longer serving, but we're doing our best to track him down. The pathologist's autopsy report at the time stated the body had superficial wounds and a broken arm which he put down to the body being struck by a boat. So, my boss has agreed to reopen the case. We're already seeking permission to exhume the body. Thanks, we'll be taking this from here. Oh, well, we've got an ongoing... It's ours it. now. We'll keep you in the loop as best we can. Well, it seems like you're in everybody's good books. Get down, I know I've been waiting. We need to complete the form. I'm down on the floor! 
Is it? Yeah. My name's Tammy. I'm one of the multidisciplinary offender management team. This is your first appointment? Yep. Yeah. I'm ready to restart my life. Lovely. By rejoining the police service. Uh, it says here that you were acquitted of conspiracy to murder but found guilty of perverting the course of justice. Yes, I'm uh, appealing against the conviction. I'm going to clear my name. You won't be able to rejoin the police with a criminal conviction. I told you I'm appealing. Uh, <laughs> have you actually checked to see that I, ca I can rejoin? Well, no, I haven't checked. Well, then I would like to apply to rejoin the police service. I'm sorry, why are you looking at me like that? Lindsay, I don't know you. I've got nothing against you, but I can't help you if you're going to be in denial. You're an offender, which means there's no chance you'll be able to rejoin the police. Yeah, I'm not a criminal. Let's look on the bright side. Try getting you into work. Everything follows from that. OK. Well, um... I was a detective inspector, so I've got a valuable skill set. on them forensics? Um, yes, sir. There were notable findings on the inside of the envelope recovered from Danny Waldron's flat. They found a number of tiny stains, less than a millimetre across. Ink, standard biro, could have belonged to anyone. And blood. And that'd be Danny's, right? No, sir. It matched to Linus Murphy's. The final report states that these findings are consistent with a bloodstained note written during or shortly after Danny Waldron's torture murder of Linus Murphy. Should I send a copy to DSR not, no. sir? No, I'll handle it for now. And, and this is just between us for now. Nice one. Offender management team. Come in. Were you issued with the information we put? difficult for you. And we're here to help you pick up the pieces. How long do I have to stay here? Well, you served half your sentence and now you're out on licence. You understand all this, of course. We want to help you move on, but it's not going to be easy. You're going to need money for rent, for living expenses, I can help you now, if you want. Ten quid. What are you saying? I was just going through the role of the MOMT in your adjustment to life after prison. such busy schedules. I don't think the taxpayer will mind. 
shame I'm going to ruin the evening. Right. Well, you know you can speak freely. I can't tell you how to run your department, but I want you to move Steve Arnott on. Make him some other department's problem. Let me tell you about Steve Arnott. He's my most dogged investigator. He will not leave a stone unturned. I had intended that um, meeting in a more social setting would make this less confrontational between us. <laughs> yeah. I've only just got started. I would like the um, chicken liver pate and the sea bass. I'll be right back. Thanks, and I'll have the soup. Followed by the uh, sirloin steak, medium well, and uh, no sauce. to watch this if you want to put something else on. It's fine. You hungry? You want to go out? Tired. Yeah, all right. I need to tell you what I found out about Rona Murphy. Well, you looked into it. Murphy was person of interest in the inquiry into the murder of Tommy Hunter. In what way? Rona Murphy was one of Hunter's closest associates. We never interviewed him. Major violent crime did. Rona Murphy was interviewed about the conspiracy Lindsay Denton was convicted of. Looks like it. None of this was in the file. It must have been doctored. You didn't get any of this from me. Who'd have thought? What are you after? Have you ever heard the name Ronan Murphy? Why'd you ask? Just thought you might have heard the name. Are you reopening my case? Forget it, all right? It's not why I'm asking. Look, I don't expect you to care, Steve, but I'm never, ever going to get back to being that person that I was before all this happened. You know, the only thing that kept me sane, the thing that got me up in the morning, was being a police officer. I want to find the people that framed me, Steve. And I, I believe, well, I hope, that you do too. So, the audio file on this phone is as embarrassing to you as it is to me. Believe you me, I've got it backed up. I don't enjoy threatening people. They make me. Ronan Murphy was killed by a police officer. And Murphy was a prime suspect in the murder of Tommy Hunter, but for some reason that's been hidden from AC-12. Well, bring in the officer that killed him. He was killed a couple of weeks after. Why? Oh, come on, Steve. Best guess he was breaking open a paedophile ring. What? Well, don't you see? 
Ronan Murphy was interviewed by the team investigating Tommy Hunter's murder. And where does he get that from? I'm not at liberty to say so. Here we go again. But Tommy Hunter was involved in grooming underage girls and pimping them out. And he was about to turn informer. Now, the people who ordered his murder didn't want what he knew about child sexual exploitation to come out. And that's exactly the same motive as the murder of Danny Walton. They're connected. So we know Hunter's murder was orchestrated by the caddy, and there's ample evidence that someone was pulling Harry Bain's strings. Using the exact same methods as the caddy. Voice contact only, multiple phones. Yeah, but how can this be the caddy? DC Cole is dead. Well, the caddy is my inquiry, sir. So maybe I should be the one to look into it. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be grateful. Sir. Sir. What? Something to say? Oh, you're not at liberty. Sir. Well, I know exactly who we should speak to first. Who? Hey. We'll be fine, thanks, Steve. See, the thing is, mate, no one likes a partner holding out on them. So, where are you taking me? To the lying bastard who told us the caddy was dead. Well, why do you let me handle this? He's a chippy bastard. If I'm there, there'll be a witness to who said what. Cheers. Doctor. Mate. So this then? We're following up on a statement you made in 2013 in connection with the murder of Tommy Hunter. It's okay if we come in. Oh, well, you have done well for yourself, eh? You too. Landed on your feet, you might say. <laughs> Crime audit. We gather important figures for important figures. So, how can I be of assistance to AC-12? This report, sensitive parts of which are not for your eyes, quotes your statement regarding DC Cole. D.I. Cotton wrote this. I'm sure he can shed any light required. This is just routine, no? We're just following up on one or two details. Are these your words? DC Cole was nicknamed the caddy because he wore golf jumpers but never played golf. DC Cole boasted of underworld connections and attempted to recruit me into a clandestine network of corrupt police officers. I cooperated with your investigation. But we've got some new lines of inquiry. Did Cole ever mention a gangland associate of Tommy Hunter named Ronan Murphy? <laughs> right. You pointed the finger at Cole. You led everyone up the garden path. Meanwhile, we've got two coppers murdered. I'm not saying another word without a solicitor. Fine. We'll continue this conversation at AC12. Under caution, a date to be appointed by us. Thank you. Sir. You have to shut this down. I will not let anyone put you on the spot about Cole. We both know why. Shut this down now. We well, you know the secrets I can spill. Why don't you come into AC12 for your solicitor? You tell us you heard the caddy rumour about Cole off some old lag, dead or lost his marbles, and you leave me to do the rest. And? There's always an and. And? You turn over all the stuff you've got on me. End of. End of. The incriminating item I've got on you, that's my only insurance. You need me to shut this down. I'm small fry. You're the big fish. So what'll happen when they find out about all that evidence you've been sitting on? Hmm? The contacts in that phone, the call history, all in my past mind. And that isn't something anyone could shut down. Now you're what? Six months off retiring? Four and a half. Look, I wasn't more than a kid when all this started. Certain people pushed me into joining the force to do their dirty work from the inside. And the truth is, mate, I want to retire too. 
just in a different way. But I can't do that till I'm free of the past. And you can be free too. Four and a half months, that's you walking off into the sunset. If none of this, I'd get over you. The purpose of today's interview is to re-examine a statement provided voluntarily by DC Morton on October 17th, 2013. This is document one in your folders. Is this your statement? It is. And do you now wish to amend your statement in any way? I do. DC Jeremy Cole was a corrupt officer. I thought there's no room for in the police service. What he got up to sickened me. I did have occasion to meet Cole, and he did at one time boast about his connections to underworld figures. Did you report, Cole? Although this is a voluntary interview, I request the professional courtesy of being questioned by an officer at least one rank superior. Why didn't you report Cole at the time? Thought he was a lippy kid. He was full of it. I didn't believe his boasts. Much later, I learned about his offences. If only I'd acted, I might have prevented them. I'm extremely remorseful. In regards to your statement of Cole being the caddy, would you now like to make any further amendments? I never heard Cole himself use that nickname. I got it from another source, and I passed it on. I should have made that clear in my original statement. I'm extremely remorseful. Right, and who was the other source? An old friend from my days on armed robbery. Terry Capistrano. And do you have any further information? No, sir. Only that I'm extremely remorseful. Well, thank you, DC Morton. No further questions. Interview terminated. Right, well, I'll check out this name he gave us. Oh, well, I wouldn't bother if I were you. Terry Capistrano got Alzheimer's. He was retired sick. The poor bugger's lost his marbles. Convenient. Oh, come off it, Kay. Look, Nigel's just trying to help. Can we be sure? Look, I know he's a mate and everything, but he's a few months off retirement, and between me and you, his missus hasn't been too well lately. I really don't give a shit. Look, his heart's in the right place. Let's just leave this cock up behind us, eh? Please. Yeah, well, I suppose I can overlook it. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Well, as now we know the cut is active again, but this time we get the bastard. Yeah. Lindsay! Thank you. I'm sorry for disturbing you. What's this about? I'm afraid I've heard that you've been absent from work. I'm concerned that you're not coping, and if you were to get into trouble again, you'd return to prison. Well, I'm never going back to prison. Mm. afford to lose that job. What did you expect for 10 quid? I was trying to help you.
Don't you try making up any lies about this, because it's all on video. You can't do that! It's illegal! You're saying that I can't record you without your prime knowledge as a breach of Article 8 of the Human Rights Act. I'll take your Human Rights Act and I'll raise you Section 4 of the Protection from Harassment Act 1997. And your offence under that act carries a maximum prison sentence of five years. <clears throat> I'll see you in court. Where's my name? Off sick, I heard. Some forensics I asked to chase up. Well, you'll just have to wait. Look, Kate's got a post mortem report for you if you're interested. Thanks. Yeah, if you just get a couple of. Uh... You got the new PM on Oliver Stevens Lloyd? Yeah. You're going to get around to telling me? The new autopsy found significant differences from the original. Both arms were broken and there was a severe skull fracture. The fracture wasn't consistent with a flat surface like the hull of a boat. It looked more like a hammer blow. Right. Look at the original PM. The distribution list at the end. Routine distribution to senior officers at the time. Routine except for one name. Chief Superintendent Fairbank had nothing to do with this case. He ran vice. Also copied in on the missing persons report. And what do we know about Chief Superintendent Fairbank? This. Councillor Dell wrote with guess who? Chief Superintendent Fairbank. Roach and Fairbank. Roach and Fairbank. Chief Superintendent Fairbank retired in 2008. Oh, yeah, Pat ran vice for donkey's years. Well, if Oliver Stevens Lloyd did submit a list of abusers at Sandsview, almost certainly it would have gone to vice. Almost certainly. Which makes the fact he was copied in on Stevens Lloyd's missing persons and post-mortem reports all the more suspicious. So, former Chief Superintendent Fairbank still lives in the area. See what he's got to say for himself. Good work, you two. Good work. Sir. Sir. Come in, please. Very grateful for your time, sir. Oh, anything I can do to help. And, um, I'm retired now. There's no need for the sir. Follow me. Take a seat. Uh, I'm DS, sir. Uh... Tea or coffee? Ah, oh, we're fine. Thank you, sir. I was saying, uh, I'm DS Arnold. DC Fleming. Mr Fairbank, we'd like to begin by asking you about a social worker who went missing in October 98, Oliver Stevens Lloyd. It doesn't ring a bell. If we may, sir, perhaps this report might jog your memory. Blind as a bat without these. Are you sure you don't want to see your coffee? We're fine. Thank you, sir. Sorry. The report was copied to you, Minister. Is there any reason you might take an interest? None at all. Can you explain why you'd be sent this report? Well, I don't remember any of this. I mean, you're going back a good many years. We'd like to show you some newspaper clippings, if we may. You appear to be quite close to Councillor Del Roach. 
crossed occasionally, usually at a charity event. Uh, we weren't close. Well, we're looking into allegations of child sexual exploitation involving Councillor Roach. As head of vice, did you ever deal with any complaints against Roach? Well, there may have been some such saying, Councillor Roach has done this or Councillor Roach did that. And what would it be that the councillor did? Well, I don't recall the details, but when these things came up, they would have been looked into. Did you ever deal with complaints of abuse at Sandsview Boys' Home? That doesn't ring a bell. There was a specific allegation made by the social worker that we're talking about, Oliver Stevens Lloyd. Sorry. Well, Stevens Lloyd claimed he compiled a list of authority figures who, with the collusion of staff, conducted systematic abuse of boys resident at Sandsview. See, I've never even heard of this Stansview place. Oh, sorry. Um, I'll get that, love. Here it is. Hope I'm not too late. Spot on. How are you keeping it? Yeah, can't complain, can't complain. I hope you don't mind me calling you. No, it's also a matter of professional courtesy. As you were, as you were. Oh, now you stay after, won't you? Joyce will kill me if I let you off the hook from her Victoria sponge. <laughs> That's very kind of you, sir. Thank you. Uh. Don't mind me. Now, where were we? Where's Hastings? Briefing. Inspectors and above only. Okay. What the hell was going on with Hastings showing up at Fairbank's house? Oh, you heard Fairbank. He called him, put the gaffer on the spot. Yeah, well, I saw the handshake at the door. It was Masonic. And that file on Ronan Murphy. Murphy's connection to Hunter must have been concealed by police officers. And who gave us that file? Hastings. The caddy is the code name for a serving police officer with lifelong links to organised crime, working as a fixer within the police service for certain criminal interests. No officer has ever been irrefutably identified as the caddy, hence his existence is putative. The term was first heard in a video statement made by John Thomas Hunter. DC Jeremy Cole, deceased. Now Cole was originally presumed on the balance of probabilities to be the caddy, but that conclusion is no longer supportable. PC Harindapal Baines, a corrupt AFO. His statements of evidence have led to the most accurate profile yet of this individual. The caddy is male. Given his lifelong links to organised crime, the caddy is almost certainly from a working class background and grew up in an urban environment. Given the history of his activities, starting from some time between 2005 to 2010, according to the video statement by Tommy Hunter, the caddy is probably under 35. Given his access to confidential information regarding ongoing operations, the caddy is almost certainly a detective. His ability to manage communications without ever betraying his own identity implies a highly trained, highly sophisticated approach to covert operations that is associated with counter-terrorism. And lastly, Baines describes the caddy's voice as having a London or South East accent. As your bullet points. All right, everybody, let's leave it there. Thank you. Of course.
was, uh... This is only a profile. There's lots of people this description could fit. But only the caddy could have got his hands on Lindsay Denton's bribe money from the right forensic source. Sorry, Gaffer, but the fingers point at one of our own. SIM card. It's all in there. But I don't know what to say. Got it then.